Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new series that I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be playing Europa Universalis 4, and I'm gonna be mispronouncing a lot of things, uh, including the name, the countries, and everything. Uh, this is uh, a game that's kind of new. It came out about like so, six or so months ago, um, and I caught wind of it the other day on a YouTube video, and I checked it out. I watched a little bit. I've done the tutorials. Um, I am by no means an expert at this game, um, but what it, what the whole premise is, it, it starts off, you can start off a, a couple different key points in history, but I'm going to start off with the earliest one at 1444, um, it's called the, the Rise of the Ottomans, and that has, you know, just because at that time period the Ottomans were, you know, starting to be kind of a, a decent powerhouse, I guess, I don't know, uh, but you can pretty much, be able to change the, uh, the map mode. Um, you can pr you can start with any country you want. Um, obviously, not the ones that don't have any any uh, uh, color to them. But um, if you wanted to, you could start over here in one of the Japan um, or one of the daimyos um, around Japan, or you know somewhere in India, or you could even start in the Americas um, with one of the native uh, tribes, or the Aztecs, or the Incas, or Mayans. You know that you can you could do all that if you wanted, um, but what I think we're going to focus on um, is the Ottomans. I think that's what we're going to go with, and uh, I'll just go ahead and show you the options real quick. Um, uh, no bonuses, uh, normal AI, um, and we're playing Iron Man mode. And what that means is uh, uh, you. Only one save file, and it automatically saves over it. I can't, you know, go back on a decision or anything like that. Um, the only thing that might happen is, say, if there's a crash or something, or my video gets corrupted. Um, the only downside to the Iron Man mode is um, all the progress will be lost. Um, so if that does happen, or if we have issues with that, um, I might change it just for sakes, the sake of a uh, um, recording and uh, making sure everything is covered that way. But uh, for the most part, I don't think that should be an issue. But uh, we'll see. Um, but like I said, we're going to start with the Ottomans. I think uh, there's several different ways you can go about you, you know, you could say if you wanted to colonize, it would be much easier to start as Portugal or Castile, which will later become uh, Spain if those, you know, certain things happen correctly. Um, because they're obviously they're much closer to unoccupied territories. And they get some, uh, they start off with a few uh, different bonuses that help them off, uh, help them with the uh, colonization route. Um, but like I said, I'm new, and I want to just focus on the, the, I wouldn't really say easier stuff, because everything has its own complexities and intricacies. Um, but I want to focus with the, uh, um, on the uh, learning how to, you know, to annex nations and to take over different stuff and just build an empire. Um, and the Ottomans, uh, from what I've heard and what people told me, it would be the easier way to do that. They start off with a decent military land base, military and a decent uh, uh, navy, so that shouldn't be too bad. So uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to discuss. Let's go ahead and get right into it. And uh, we do start off with a, in a war uh, against Albania, but uh, they're only, like, I think they're a single uh, province nation. It shouldn't be too hard. We should be able to crush them pretty, pretty rapidly. So let's go ahead and jump right on. Uh, saving game. Call it the Ottomans. All right. So let's see how we do. Like I said, I am I am by no means an expert at all and it, at this game, much less any type of game. You know, along this, it's just I, I really love history and I, I really love uh, um, the fact that we don't have to go by. Um, okay, good. It starts off paused. Uh, we are being a we are attrition. That's what the little skull right there beside the thing is. Is uh, we're being we're having attrition. Um, that's because the total amount of forces I think in this province uh, is more than what the province can uh, support. See the supply limit 21. Um, and we have 26 regiments. And what these numbers mean is uh, this 26. That means we have 26,000. So each one of these, uh, like each unit, represents a thousand of that. So like right here, Albania has three thousand uh, uh, men in their regiments, and then 
so on and so forth. It goes for the naval stuff too, so uh... Alright, so let's just go ahead and check the stuff out. We don't have any advisors. We can always start for decent money. Let's see. Uh, morale of armies, that'd be good for us since we're, we're, in a, we're currently in a war. Uh, better relations over time, global trade power. I think better relations over time because I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get some alliances going maybe with uh, some other because uh, uh, we are uh, the Sunni um, so we are Muslim um, so I might try to you know go with uh, the Mamluks you know this area because they're pretty they're decently powerful or maybe somewhere on the Arab Peninsula um, but yeah for right now let's go ahead and do another. Uh, what I, I got? Yearly prestige. Oh, stability cost modifier. That's that's gonna help us out. So, each of these guys uh, add to the uh, amount of power you get over time. We actually have a really good leader right now. We're getting a lot of power. That's nice. And what this does is the power accrues over time, and you spend that on different things. Uh, most importantly, the tech and the ideas. Um, I'm still learning the basics of this, but pretty much the more tech you put in, or more points you put into each tech level, um, the better it will get, and the, obviously the more rewards you get in the long run. Um, but it all depends on what you want to do. So like, right now we have a decent uh, military, so I think we're going to be focusing on administration for the most part, um, so that way we can get more ideas. And what the ideas do is... Uh, you come in here and you, you also have to spend the same amount of point or not the same amount but the same uh, currency these points and this also so it, it's you really need to figure out what you want to do long term and and try to focus on that um, but that doesn't mean you can't put points on other things and that's something I'm still trying to figure out the, the little nuances and everything too um, but we don't have to worry about this for a while because we have to get to uh, level four um, in our admin tech level so I'm, I think that's what I'm going to save it for first and a, another bad thing about using administrative power to, in a lot of this stuff it also goes with your you got to use this to boost the stability and that's very important the higher stability the more money you, you make the less likely you are to have uh, uh, revolts and rebellions in your country and things like that but uh, we'll, we'll learn this together so save what this uh, turn these messages off and uh, we don't have an idea yet let's see form an alliance with Kandar, city of the world's desire Byzantine does not exist and you own Constantinople that actually we're gonna go for them soon they're small and fractured right now so I think that's good national adopt that ruler has skill lose 100 military power ottomans get dev shire system until the end of the game pretty much national revolt risk plus one national manpower modifier i think i'm gonna go with that so that way we can get the extra manpower uh and see we can right here we can uh negate that revolt risk until that or oh, oh, at least until the death of our uh, current ruler but we gained 10 piety and I'm not quite sure how this piety works piety represents the religious devotion to the Muslim faith within your nation declaring war on infidels will increase your piety while declaring war on other Muslim nations will decrease it so the higher the piety we get tax modifier national manpower and technology cost so that's something we definitely want to look into so I think we're gonna go ahead and get this so we get that 10 piety Yep, see? That went up. Nice, okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what we have here. Like I said, we already have a decent uh, Black Sea Squadron. I like that. It's pretty cool. Now, where I have them? Come around here and blockade. They're gonna have. These guys move in. So let's go ahead, unpause, and scooch up the uh, time a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. Crimea 
Well, it's an alliance. There's Crimea right here. There's Sunni. You know what? We'll go ahead and form that alliance. It probably wouldn't hurt. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and take out these Albanian scums, and then we'll go ahead... Detach and then come after these guys. Detach a siege, and uh, what that does is it it leaves back enough uh, manpower to actually siege the city, while everybody else you control. We easily, easily destroyed them. But hold on, royal marriage? Why not? That can't be a bad thing. All right, so let's keep it going. And um, these first few videos. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> In these first few videos, I'm going to be using it's kind of a. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's uh, make a new unit. Split these in half. And then move these over so uh, hopefully we'll stop having attrition. Uh, but yeah, these first few videos I'm going to use as kind of like a judge on the quality. If I need to change sound settings, things like that. Um. Declared war on their new enemy. Okay, that doesn't affect us. Um, but yeah, so if uh, there's anything I need to change, I'll use these first few videos as kind of a, uh, a guide stick, and uh, I'll make appropriate changes. So, so far so good. These guys actually let's bump it up a little bit just to speed this up. And um, as you can see, um, yeah, let's go to this. Uh, the siege level. Um, it starts off negative, meaning we have no chance at all to break this, uh, to um, capture the the province. Um, but over time, it slowly goes up, and um, eventually, I, um, from what I've been able to see, around 50% in the positive, it usually falls, and we usually take it. And at that point, we'll have a 100% war score, and each time we want to battle or blockade or do like the, anything like that against people we're in war with, um, our war score goes up. And the higher that is, obviously, the more we can get out of the war. You know, if we have like a hundred percent war score, we can ask for a lot more. And as soon as this falls, we'll have a hundred percent war score. Um, I I think. And we can go ahead and annex Albania completely, um, and it'll be part of our Ottoman Empire. So, let me see. We're at seven percent right now. Fourteen percent. Thirty-five percent. So Albania should be falling shortly. And it looks like it freezes every now and then. That's because whenever you you fast forward time fast enough, it it always auto saves. Up oh, and right there. Yep. See, it's auto saving, um, and it the game just kind of momentarily freezes while auto saves. That's it. So, and they try to escape, and we won. We didn't get a war score because we were already at 100%. So what you do is you go to this screen. And it shows kind of like the who's on your side, who you're fighting against, if there's any allies or anybody else to join the war. Um, the current war score in any of the battles, the history of the battles, but you know, obviously there's just that one. Um, and then you click here to go to peace, and there's diff uh, a bunch of different things you can do. Um, if you're wanting to win, like if you're winning, you go to demand tribute. If you're losing and you want to get out, you can go to offer tribute. Um, so what we're going to do is go to full annexation. Um, and down here it shows you the uh, the peace offer value, and that that's based on war score. So like, if you had like a, a say a 50 war score and annexing a country was 25 and you wanted money and you you know eat every time you add more money it uh increases the peace offer so you try to get as much uh you can with the current war score since we have 100 percent and all we're doing is full uh annexing them uh, obviously you know it, it's uh it's going to go so we'll go ahead and send to the man uh bump down our time frame and they're gonna accept hopefully yep they accepted so they're fully they're ours now so I'm gonna pause and see this is already a core but they are their culture is different and they're orthodox so that means we're gonna have a pretty good chance of uh, rebellions so what we're gonna do is have this guy come over here as well unpause that and we're also going to Send an emissary or a missionary over to flip that religion. Um, so uh, they'll be more likely not to revolt and things like that. 
Alright, alright. Diplomat has arrived. We have... This is pretty much shows any kind of units you have. Um, it'd be a diplomats, merchants, eventually it'll be uh, uh, colonists and colonies and places you're annexing and things like that. So it's just a it's a very handy thing to, to keep track of all your stuff. And I'm actually going to bump the time up a little bit so our little guy right here can uh, get there quicker. Bump that down. I'm going to go ahead and group them together. So it's the Imper Imperial Army. So we have the Imperial Army, Army of Egypt, and Army of Anatolia. So what I'm, eventually what I'm going to do is uh, rename these things. Um, so it would be a lot easier to tell what their purposes are, especially with the navies. Um, I'm probably going to detach uh, all the transports, name them the transport fleet and things like that. But that's whenever we need to do that, we'll do that. But right now we don't, we don't have a need. Uh, right now, let's check on our finances. Um, we are we can actually bump down the maintenance of our army since we're not currently at war. Um, but the thing is, if there's a revolt or anything like that, uh, let's see. How do I get? What is the? No, um, there's more religion, opinion, no, not opinion, there's a map mode that shows, uh, a revolt, okay, yeah, so most places aren't in a, you know, very inclined to revolt right now. Um, right now, it's Albania, obviously, because they're Orthodox, and there's a lot of Orthodox Zealots. Um, it's only at 8.1%, 8 so that's not too bad. So As long as we have troops sit there, we should be good. But, let's get back to the Every now and then, there's going to be these decisions that pop up, um, and you have to pick... Some of them only have one choice, and it can be good or bad, but some of them, you, you get to de decide what you want to do. Um, so... Uh, and a lot of them, I'm not. A lot of them are gonna be like the same type of things over and over and over. So I'm just gonna read these um, until I get familiar with them, and hopefully, you know, we can speed past them eventually. Uh, but charity for the poor, providing charity to those in need, is a core form of the Islamic faith. Okay, so we can spend money and gain piety, or lose piety and gain and lose prestige. So we're, we got plenty of money right now, so we're gonna, and we need the piety, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so um, what do we have going on right now? Uh, our idea right now, our mission is uh, get the Byzantines, I think. Yeah, take out the Byzantines. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and set up with that. I'm going to leave these four guys right here. What is our force limit at? Uh, we can make one more army. So let's see, these guys, okay, I'm going to make one more infantry right here for these guys, and that'll put us at a force limit. Uh, what about our naval force limit? We can actually make three more. Oh, that's right, I can pull these guys back too. I'm going to have them dock in there. These guys I'm going to put right here. These guys I'm going to have set up right here. So we have a two pronged attack. Uh, go ahead and unpause that. Let these guys will be moving towards their destination. Um, actually, I'm going to split these guys in half. Have some go here. Have some go here. I'm actually gonna split these guys in half again. Some go here. What I'm doing? I'm I'm setting up a blockade, so um, you get more war score and everything for whenever you do blockades. It just helps you finish faster. 
these guys are gonna go here. I'm gonna split. Uh, they tell us of the pragmatic section. Okay, just giving us information. All right, all right. I'm gonna have these guys split in half and then go here. So yeah, I'm going ahead and I'm setting up our our uh, our blockade. That's what I'm doing. Um, so whenever we do it a war, we can we can knock them out quicker. I'm actually. The music sounds awfully loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down. I apologize. Oh, peasants. Oh, that's on the island. Okay, that doesn't affect us. Okay. So if these guys are going to go here, hook up with these guys. And I know that we're playing kind of slow right now. I'm just trying to get make sure that I have a full uh, grasp of everything that's going on until I get comfortable with a higher uh, um, speed and everything. So, all right, these guys are moving. So I'll go ahead and bump these together. And we are going to go ahead and declare war. We all right. Another thing about this is if uh, uh, Cassus Belly or Belli or whatever, uh, a lot of people call it CB, so I'm just gonna call it CB as well. Go ahead and pause it. It's the reason you go to war. If you you can always go to war, even if you don't have a CB, but it, having a no CB um, drastically you know, raises the negatives. Um, that you get, you know, other countries around you might not like you as much. Um, it might give other countries a reason to attack you and things like that. Um, but since we do have a uh, a CB of conquest just to take back Constantinople, um, it's fine. Um, it's still going to give us a little bit of aggression um, towards other countries and things like that, but it's not going to be anywhere as bad. So, and plus we're we're going to get piety out of it if we if we if we if we make it. So, 